Hello everyone at 1995. Here to bring you another chapter of Rock of Steel. Remember, I do not own the Transformers Prime series or any music within this video. They belong to their rightful owners, and I do give full credit to Haley Moss on Wattpad now to the story. Chapter 3, Scrap Heap LPOV. I knew that I would hurting and bruise today, but I WASNT expecting this. I was currently standing in front of my full body mirror on my closet door, looking at the bruises covering my body. My leg, ribs, chest, side and my neck had purple and blue bruises on them. I couldn't let Magnus see this, or Ratchet that would be worse. I don't want Cranky Doc bowed on my case, I'm glad my parents just thought it was regular paintball. So I guess I was gonna have to go out in the strangest way Ivy ever went out in the hot weather. I'll be dressing like it's winter. I will never fool them. Oh well. I put on some jeans, uck boots, a turtleneck that covers my neck and I took some pain meds. I put the pain meds in my backpack along with my wallet and phone. I put some extra clothes in my BP just in case I get hot. Here goes nothing. I walk out of my room and down the stairs. I get a bottle of orange juice and then eat a apple. Dude what are you wearing all that for it's hot outside, Miko asked. I'm just feeling kind of cold today, I told her. Miko is my best friend and I should tell her but I don't want her to tell Bulkhead and him tell Ratchet, and then Ratchet get on to Magnus. Okay whatever, you say. You gonna bring your guitar, Miko asked. I'm not today maybe TMRO, I told her. She waved off and out the door and so did I when I locked the door and turned around there was Magnus. I walked over and got into the passenger seat just cause there would be more room over there with all the stuff I'm wearing. Ella why do you have so many uh, clothes on the temp is very melting, Magnus asked. Oh I just thought I would let all of you know what some states fashions are in the winter weather, I told him. Yeah that sounded better than what I told Miko, okay, Magnus said. I pulled out my iPod and found his audio cord, do you mind if I plug some music into you, I asked. That's fine. I would like to hear you sing some more, Magnus said. I nodded. I plugged in my iPod and put on trumpets by Jason Derulo. Every time that you get
What does turning you on mean? Magnus asked. Er, oh boy, my parents already gave me the sex talk but I didn't learn a few things from the internet about sex. Okay um well do y'all love how do I put this? Do y'all mate? I ask, wow, this is such an awkward subject to talk about. You mean interfacing? Magnus asked. If it's the same as us having sex then yes, I said. He didn't answer right away so I figured he was looking it up. Yes, it's the same, Magnus said. Okay wheel turning someone on is like kissing them in certain places that pleasures them which makes them? You are but a youngling why do you know about this? Magnus asked. Well my parents already talked to me about sex, they told me they wanted me to be at least 18 safe and in love and the other person really in love with me. Basically, they told that I couldn't only have sex if it's the one I'm gonna be with forever. I told Magnus. Have you interfaced? Magnus asked. No, I'm still a virgin. Have you ever interfaced? I asked. I don't know why, but it would make me upset if he said he has already had sex. No, I have not. I too will only interface when I know it's the one I'm to be with forever. I will know when I have found the one because my spark will call and pull for unto her, Magnus said. I was relieved. We drove in silence after that till we rolled into the base. I saw Jack and Raph get out of B. R.C. I wasn't expecting to carpool what gives, Jack asked R.C. It's my turn for recon, R.C. said. Okay, but it's a nice day for a ride and wouldn't want you to feel guilty for leaving me indoors, Jack said. Arctic recon, R.C. said. Indoors where it's warm, Jack said as he walked away. The Arctic I've always wanted to see snow, Raph said. I would ask you to go along but the temp is even too critical for we Autobots, Optimus told Raph. Raph looked down and said. That's okay, but I will bring your back a snowball, Optimus said. Really thanks, Raph said get excited. Ella why are you wearing that, it's nice outside, Jack asked. Well, I decided to show the boys what kind of fashion other states wear during winter, I told him. He just shrugged and went off with Miko and Raph to play a game. Magnus walked down to his birth room while I stayed in there with Ratchet, B, and Bulkhead. I walked over towards Ratchet and tapped on his foot. He looked down at me with an annoyed look. What? he said. I looked down at my feet then said, I was wondering if you could teach me about Cybertron and Cybertronians I find it very interesting. His next face was surprised but he gave a little smile and nodded. Yes, but right now I have to get this ground bridge fixed or Optimus and RC will not return, I nodded. I saw Raph go off down the hall and I decided to follow. Hey Raph you okay? I asked. Yeah just bored, he said. Yeah, you and me both, I still had my backpack on, so I decided change, I was getting hot. I'll be right back I'm gonna go change. I said, he nodded. I walked till I found the training room. I got my clothes off and changed into a basketball t-shirt, black Nike b-ball shorts and my Nike shocks. I was putting my other blobs into my BP but then I heard some noises. I looked but I didn't see anything. I went back to zipping my BP up when I heard it again. I looked and saw a bunch of metal little Kree outers and I screamed. Ultra Magnus POV I had gone into my birth room to get a nap and since I stayed awake making sure there was no harm to come to Ella. I was fixing to slip into recharge when I heard it. A high pitched scream. I don't know how I knew it was hers, but I just knew. I stood up quickly and headed to the training room, which is where this scream came from. I was about to run into the training room when she came running out in different clothes than before. I also noticed the purple and blue wound to the side of her neck. I don't think she saw me because she ran right into my left peed. Oof, she said. Ella, are you alright? What made you scream? Where did you get that wound on your neck? I asked her concerned. 
Yes, I'm fine and there was some little metal creatures in there, and I'll scrap. She said, scrap. She's been hanging out with us away too much. What little metal creatures? I asked. I don't I was changing my clothes when they were just there in front of me they were like little spiders with purple eyes and just freaky looking, she said. She still didn't answer the question about her neck though. I walked towards the training room she was walking right behind me. I transformed my left arm into a blaster when I entered the training room. I wasn't expecting to see a room full of scraplets. They saw me when Ella ran into the back of my peds. They came at me and I yelled, ah. Uh. I blasted as many as I could but they still came at my armor. I swatted all that were on me, then I grabbed Ella and ran into the main part of the base. Magnus, what are those things? Are you okay? Ella asked. Ella POV I was scared after those things had attacked Magnus knowing I couldn't really do anything. Then he grabbed me up and we ran into the main part of the base. Scraplet. Scraplet, yelled Bulkhead. He had his cannons pointed at one that was in Raph's arms. Raph put that thing down. Just look at Magnus, they attacked him just a second ago, I told Raph. Just as he was about to answer the little bugger flew out of his arms and straight at B's armor. B was trying to get it off but it just came eating his armor, finally, he blasted it to the groan. Raph then hit it till it was dead with a crowbar. Easy killer, Jack said to Raph. I'm sorry Bumblebee, is he gonna be okay? Raph said to B and asked Ratchet. Yes, it's only a mesh wound, Ratchet said. I was safely still in Magnus's hand close to his chest. It was warm there and I liked it. Now do you believe me all scrap let's do is eat everything metal, Bulkhead said as he was talking to Raph, Jack, and Miko. Ratchet said that there was never just one and that in order for the ground bridge to be fixed we have to find the leak. You have to let us help, Jack said. We're not made of metal, Raph said. Yeah the scraplets can't hurt us, Miko said. Typical I find your flashiness to be your least engaging quality. But it would provide an advantage, Ratchet said. Okay good Ultra Magnus. Ella and I will watch your back while you repair the ground bridge. Jack said. Miko turned to Bulk, Rap, and B, and we go on a bug hunt. Both B and Bulk were shaking in their skins. I looked up at Magnus to see he was looking back down at me. You can put me down now Magnus, I am okay. Thank you though, I told him. He nodded and set me down on the ground. I walked over to find a weapon I could use. I found oddly enough a gun. It didn't look like one though. It looked like a small blaster like what Akri transforms her arms into. Fly. You never said that they could fly, Jack yelled. Then the scraplets head right for Magnus and Ratchet. Both Ratchet and Magnus fell to the ground and tried to get them off to no avail. Jack sprayed as many with a fire extinguisher. I blasted the rest with the blaster gun. They were all were dead. Ella, where did you get a blaster from? Ratchet asked. Uh, from the stuff that you said don't touch, I told him wearily. For once, I am glad, Ratchet said. The others came into the main part of the base and then more attacked. Miko, Rap, Jack and I killed all the rest. Is that all of them? Bulk asked. Hardly, these were just scouts. Ratchet said. You mean there's more of them and they know we're all in here, Bulk said. Ratchet nodded and B said, you have got to be kidding me. We have to get the ground bridge operational, Ratchet said. How do we find it? Jack asked. And how do we fix it? Raph asked. Miko, Jack, and Raph went off looking for the leak and I stayed with the Autobots. There was a whole swarm POF scraplets when I looked up from a noise I had heard. Ratchet turned the ground bridge in and the Grian Vertex was once again working. I knew none of them could get up but I had to warn Optimus and Akri. I had to become bait. Ratchet I need metal that you don't plan on getting back, I asked Ratchet. He pointed me over to a scrap heap of metal. I grabbed a large piece of metal and stood in front of the ground bridge. 
I waved it around and shouted, Hey uglies, you want a piece of me? I got their attention. Ella, what are you doing? I heard Magnus say, but I was already way into the ground bridge. All the scraplets followed me and I landed with a thud into the freezing snow. Optimus, Acri, get down, scraplets incoming, I said. Then I saw all the scraplets flew towards Optimus and RC. They froze instantly and dropped to the ground. I'd invite you in but the place is a mess, I told them. I stood up slowly due to the fact I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. And I was beginning to shiver. Why are you here Ella you could freeze before we would, Optimus asked me. Wheel the others were injured. So somebody had to be B-E-T, the B-Bait, I told them while I was really starting to shiver now. Come on let's get you into the heat as well, Optimus said as he picked me up and held me close to his chest where his spark was warm. We all walked through the ground bridge. When we got to the last part of the ground bridge I saw Ratchet, Bumblebee, and Bulkhead all laying on the medical beds. Magnus was still standing he didn't get hurt all that bad. Optimus and RC sat down and we're getting warmed up by these cables that Ratchet had put on them. I was still huddled close to Optimus' spark. It was warm in the base but I was still cold. Optimus' hands were wrapped all the way around me, so you couldn't see what he was holding. Where's LA? Magnus asked. In here, I said. The sound was muffled though. Optimus unwrapped me from his hand and handed me to Magnus. Magnus put me up again his spark. It was so much warmer and I warmed up in no time. You did a good job old friend you should rest, Optimus told Ratchet. Well at W-A-S-N-T, all my doing, Ratchet said. Our human friends are small but strong, Optimus said. Then all of a sudden Mika screamed. Scraplet, jackass ready to beat it with a crowbar. Spider, Miko yelled. Is it on me? Miko asked then ran off like it was still on her. We all just looked at her. Did she just scream like a little girl? Bulkhead asked amused. Thank the alls park that this infestion happened on a Saturday. Ratchet said and we all nodded. There you go, guys. Chapter 3 Rock of Steel I do hope you enjoy this video but remember I do not own the Transformers Prime series or the music that was playing in the video that was Nightcore, Trumpets, female version. It was supposed to be the normal version but I couldn't find it I do hope enjoy and I apologize for not getting the right one but nonetheless. Give credit to Maximum Nightcore for creating this music video so if you like this video please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. This is Nat1995 signing off.